This is one of the simulations that we did for the Kegworth accident, and we're looking here at a 20G forward impact, um, looking in particular at what's happening to the dummy here in this rear of the two, the two seats that we have got. You can see that during the impact, the legs have started to fly up underneath the back of the seat in front. The dummy here is in an unbraced position, so it's representing a passenger who wasn't prepared for a crash. And you can see now that as we run step on through uh, this piece of high-speed video, you can see the legs extending further, and the head is now going to come down and hit the back of the seat in front, just beneath the tray table, and impact in to the forearms of the dummy there as well. You can see that the legs here are still extended, and the, the knee is tr has been trying to go down in this direction here. So a, a whole pattern of injury you can see arising from this particular sort of impact. Well, look at, looking at that film, it would appear that the seats have been actually designed to open joints and break bones. If, if you want to stop people in a hurry, probably the least clever way that you can do it is by putting them in a forward-facing seat with something else in front of them and attaching them to it only by a lap belt. Yes, with, with that sort of g-force, what, what, what sort of speed uh, of impact would that represent? Well, in the case of this particular aircraft, it will have gone into its first impact on the eastern embankment of the motorway mm. at probably 120, 130 miles an hour, something of that sort of order. It will have slowed down a little, but not very much in that first impact. And the majority of the uh, stopping will have occurred when it hit the western embankment and started climbing up the western embankment and breaking up and it will have stopped probably from an, an initial speed of about 90 95 miles an hour and then stopped over really not very much more than a fuselage length before it came to its final rest well here we have a rearward facing seat uh, this is actually a seat from a RAF VC-10 of a, a few years ago uh, a similar sort of impact to the one that you saw before uh, this is an impact really is an absolute non-event. You can see that the impact is just beginning to start now. The dummy is just being forced further and further back into the seat. Still requires restraint from a lap strap, otherwise at the end of the impact the dummy is likely, or the seat occupant is likely to recoil out. But you can see that what we have done is that we have taken the whole force of the impact over the whole of the back of the seat, the whole of the back of the occupant, so the force has been distributed potential for injury is clearly substantially less and there is absolutely no doubt that if you want to protect somebody against the sort of impact that we see here or the sort of impact that we saw in the Kegworth accident that this is the ideal way to do it. Your work can be transposed to other forms of transport and have they been used for example say on on the road? Well uh, if you put them in coaches it would certainly solve some of the problems that we have seen in coach accidents Although I think that if you had to have a, a pecking order for what you would like to see first in a coach, it would have to be rollover protection to stop people being crushed by the collapse of the, the roof of the coach. And I suspect realistically uh, that the next modification that you would make would in fact be to put a, a diagonal belt, lap and diagonal belt, so that you had the same sort of restraint in a coach seat as you, as you had in a car seat. So as a result of your work here, and in an ideal world, what changes would you like to see in the modern aircraft? We saw in the Kegworth accident that almost all of the overhead lockers came down during the impact. There was some evidence from one of the passengers, in fact, that the overhead lockers started to open under the heavy vibration that existed in the airplane immediately before the first impact. They, the lockers need to be designed for the dynamic case. One of the arguments that has been advanced against having rearward facing seats is the fact that because overhead lockers come down and open, you can be hit in the face by items flying out of them. Uh, and it has been argued that because of this, you should have seats that face forward. I think this is a complete nonsense. I think the solution to that problem is to design your overhead lockers properly. So that, there you have my three things. Better floors to a dynamic uh, designed to a dynamic requirement, rearward facing seats, again designed to a dynamic requirement, and improved fitment for overhead locker doors and improved attachments for overhead lockers so that again they can resist the dynamic loads that are applied in certain types of crashes. Wing Commander Anton, thank you very much. Thank you. That brings us to the end of another program and another year. Thank you for watching Telemed. And for those of you who take the trouble to write with comments and suggestions, a very special thanks.
We'd also like to thank all the staff at the Royal Air Force Institute of Aviation Medicine for their help. Next month's issue is about sinusitis. So until then, have a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. <laughs>